Thank you to Rachel Kaula for those thoughts. And in my sermon, I'm going to be picking up a little bit actually on the idea of being a Gen Xer. She and I are part of that generation growing up here in America. And she contrasts that to people who grow up in different countries Jewishly. Each experience is different and has to be looked at it for its own. And even if we had it really great here in America, there are things that sometimes turn people off to Judaism. We quite don't know why. It's an emotional reaction. And so what was that Gen X turnoff for some people? Clearly, Rachel and I were not turned off by it. It was a constant refrain to any of the Gen X kids in religious school and day school was, you better keep Judaism as an adult, because if you don't, you are giving Hitler a posthumous victory. It's a hard message to receive, important one for sure, but it turned some people off. It scared them. It was like, what is this? about to the point now that the gen xers are adults you have people like speechwriter sarah Hurwitz writing a memoir saying here all along where she describes that her conservative religious school had teachers spooked by the holocaust and even had survivors with numbers on their arms so no makes sense that they would push that thinking they were afraid they were scarred they did wanted to make sure that judaism did survive that hitler did not have a posthumous victory but she was a child she didn't get it so she used as she quotes her oscar acting skills to convince her mother that she was miserable in that religious school and after enough pushing and prodding the mother bought it and transferred her to a one day a week religious school and her bat mitzvah was mostly in English. And Hurwitz writes that she regrets that acting job, regrets that decision because she missed out on learning so much of our heritage. But we need to recognize in 2023 that all Jews, children and adults, are Jews by choice. And we have to focus on what attracts us to Judaism. What makes it purposeful to want to be part of the Jewish community and not just use either the prod of the Holocaust or even the prod of you know, the old fashioned fire and brimstone. Here in America, even rabbis have to choose whether they want to observe. Because if you leave Great Neck like I did this summer, I mentioned I took a solo road trip to go out and see baseball and play golf, you're anonymous. I put on a baseball cap, no one knows I'm a rabbi. And so when I arrived at Camden Yards, famous for its crab sticks and barbecue, I took a picture of them and sent them to my friends, kind of, I guess, to, to rile them up. They answered it, and they all to a T said, no one would know, Rabbi, if you took a taste of the forbidden fruit. <laughs> I sent a little awkward LOL, and then went to see the Orioles beat my New York Mets. But the truth is, yes, at Camden Yards and all the other stadiums that I went to, I could have bought something unkosher and eaten it, and no one but me, but the one above, would know. And my theology is lightning doesn't strike when a Jew chooses to eat pork chops. If we want to observe Judaism and be involved in a Jewish community, we need positive reasons, not what I call the or else reasons. We need to be proud Jews because it enhances our lives brings blessing to the world. So in true uh, uh, tribute to Rabbi Eckstein, who we get to hear a little bit later, 
Here are three reasons why I think we should embrace Judaism in a positive way. Reason one, I keep kosher. I did not buy that crab stick that day because when we live Jewishly, we identify as part of a tight-knit community and we are a nation, Am Yisrael. In Deuteronomy, Moses points out to us that God chose the Israelite nation not because they are the greatest nation. In fact, because they are the smallest of people. And in some ways, God is giving us a little extra specialness for our self-esteem to say, even though we are little, we have a path that we know how to live. And we can all say, as we like to say now, M-O-T, members of the tribe. And when we say that we are chosen and identify with the tribe, we know that we have some special responsibilities and yes, unique blessings that go along with that. Eating kosher does not make someone bad, but I think that keeping kosher allows for greater identity and stronger membership in the tribe. There is really a gamut of rituals. We can call it a buffet, perhaps. And the more that you pick up and put on your plate, the more strongly identified you are with being Jewish. Shabbat, for example, just like Kashrut, Shabbat is a gift to the Jewish people, a day to observe and be in community, to connect with God. And yes, I know we are combating anti-Semitic sentiment that says chosenness means superior. What are you Jews doing? Chosenness means unique. It's a personal idea of self-esteem. We do desire to be a little different than the majority. Doesn't make the majority of other people bad. Doesn't make us superior. It just makes us a little different. We get to be individualistic, really, as a whole entire nation. So how do we embrace this chosenness and nationhood in a global society in an age of radical choice. I say being part of the Jewish community gives us identity, gives us an ability to be proud of. Yes, we can all say we're just American. We can kind of melt into the woodwork, kind of like I did a little bit this summer, but we might be lacking something spiritual and a moral structure in our life. Being a member of the tribe, we get the support of the tribe, and we have a moral structure. And that takes us to reason number two, why we should embrace Judaism. Judaism, through this corpus of wisdom I call the Torah, is a guide to us. Of course, there are other guides on earth, the Tao, Buddha, but the Torah is our guide. The Torah is how we Jews find our vast place in this universe. We humans, as the Torah teaches, on this day of Yom Kippur, can be just like angels, maybe one rung down in our goodness and what we're capable about. But we also know, based on the transgressions that we pound our chest, and just reading about the violence in the world, that humans are also capable of being dark, shall I say, the opposite of angels, demons. When an identified Jew commits a crime, people often come to me and say, Rabbi, how is this possible? Doesn't their Judaism inform them how they behave? Don't they care about the shame they bring on the Jews? 
Well, we know nothing is new under heaven. We just read the Haftarah. Isaiah asked the same question and said, how can you fast and then cheat? My response is being Jewish. Even doing the rituals doesn't automatically make someone good. The Torah is a guide. We are the actors. When Adam and Eve did eat from the so-called forbidden fruit, it was the tree of knowledge. And they gave themselves and really gave all of us the knowledge, now responsibility and burden to know and to have to choose between good and bad. In the next generation, the Torah teaches us how difficult that decision is. Cain and Abel both bring offerings and for some reason, Abel's offering is accepted and he's blessed, blessed, and Cain's is rejected. Life is unfair sometimes. And Cain is mad, he is jealous, and he is ready, as we see afterwards, to lash out at his own brother. God then speaks to him and says, if you do good, there'll be uplift. But if you do not, sin couches at the door. But you have the control over it. You can control that evil inclination. We know that Cain is unable to do so. But that message, that message to me is a mission in life. We have to seek to do right, to bring uplift to the world. And the Torah is a guide to help us to do that. And is even a guide to help us deal with our evil inclination. So we should study Torah as Jews incorporate its wisdom into our lives. And then, just as we sing to our children at Beit Agan, I'm a Jewish child and I'm proud, we can say, Am Yisrael Chai, the nation of Israel, the Torah of Israel lives. And then we can approach the anti-Semites in our midst. Because reason number three for why we should be active Jews is that is actually the best way to combat anti-Semitism. Just before Rosh Hashanah, Ambassador Deborah Lipstadt, who was appointed by President Biden to be a part of liaison to the State Department to combat anti-Semitism here in America and abroad, wrote an op-ed in the New York Times. She used to teach at Emory University, and she describes when anti-Semitism was up on the rise, a student in her class came to with a kippah on. He hadn't worn it before, and he wanted to impress his professor and said, Dr. Lipstadt, I'm wearing a kippah today because I want to show the anti-Semites that I'm not afraid. Well, he didn't really impress the professor. He upset the professor inside mostly. Why? Because her heart sank. Because this student was letting the anti-Semites set the agenda. He was not wearing a kippah because of the reasons that Jews wear kippah, identity, pride, the idea of being humble before God, all the various reasons we might wear a kippah. He was wearing one just to show the anti-Semites. And so she implores us, Lipstadt implores us to observe Judaism because it brings us positiveness. The way we can fight the anti-Semites is to show us and to show the world. Judaism has value. Your accusations are not just false, they're obviously harmful. I conclude with the cliche of eating our vegetables. We know that it's healthy to eat vegetables, but we also spend a lot of time actually making them taste good as well. We are told it's not a bad thing to have your vegetables taste good. Well, we should be focusing on making our Judaism taste good as well. Hurwitz lamented how she didn't discover the beauty of Judaism because she was too busy rejecting it. My response is that it's never too late. 
to take hold of our heritage. So this is the part of my sermon, I guess, when the rabbi says, observe more rituals, but I don't do so because of fire and brimstone that you're going to get you know, struck by lighten, lightning. I won't even say, don't give Hitler a victory. I'm going to quote Maimonides instead, who says that we should observe Judaism because the benefit it brings to us and to the world. It just makes the world a better place. There is no material punishment or material reward. Judaism for Judaism's sake, essentially. Temple Israel is the nuclear family of your Jewish nation. And so we are here as tour guides. We're literally actually gonna be taking a trip to Israel. And there's many other opportunities to join in and to be part of the Jewish community and to embrace the Torah. And so I ask all of us during this day, when we think about how to be better people, how to make the lessons of this holiday stick, to ask ourselves what piece of Torah we're going to study over the year so that we can continue to sing proudly on Yisrael Chai. Gemara Chatima Tovah.